to the Little Drops of Wonderful podcast, my place on YouTube to talk about all things crochet, knitting and yarn related and more besides because I do tend to sometimes go off on a tangent. Um, this is episode 30 and my name is Ali and I'm in Kent in the UK where I live with my husband and my two daughters who are 7 and 12. Um, and you can find me on Ravelry and Instagram as Starry Eyes Ali. And there's also a group for this podcast on Ravelry called Little Drops of Wonderful, and that's worth joining if you want to, I don't know, join in the conversation and enter the giveaways and the things like that. Um, I've said who I am, haven't I? This is episode 30, which I might have also said as well. I'm drinking my tea before it gets um, cold. Oh, before we do anything else, I want to show you my mug. Um, this is a gift from my friend Hannah, um, who is who has the Hannah from Sheep's Alley podcast, which you have to go and watch because she is the most creative person. And she made me this mug in pottery class and sent it to me for my birthday. And I just love it. I, I love, 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 love it. I'm just drinking normal tea today, but normally this is my herbal tea mug. Okay. This is my third time trying to start this podcast. I just can't seem to get the words out properly. So hopefully, um, hopefully I'll get it right this time. Um, it's been a little while since the last episode. I'm very sorry about that. And you'll notice as well that I can barely see through my Chrissy Hind fringe. I haven't had time really for a haircut. Um, if you have been uh, watching for a, a little while, uh, you'll already be aware um, but if not, just a little recap, little life recap. Um, in early January this year, my lovely dad was uh, suddenly diagnosed with brain cancer, uh, which then later um, went to his lungs as well. Um, and the last six months have been fairly horrendous. And um, I'm very sorry to say that on the 9th of May, my lovely dad passed away um, and that was a month ago now, so today's the 4th of June, it's Monday. The funeral was last Wednesday, so we had a little bit of a wait between the day that he died and when and when we got to sort of say our official goodbyes. And it was a lovely service, and I can talk about it, um, I can talk about it without getting upset, sometimes I can't, but I can today, because it's been a month since he died, and it's been six months um, of coming to terms with it all, and it's been a very sad time and I think we did him proud last week to say goodbye with his funeral and the things that people said. And um, it's time to move on now um, and get on with the business of remembering him, not as the person that got sick, but as my dad and, uh, and grieving really. So new, a new start, June equals a new start. And I just wanted to say, big thank you to everybody over the last six months or the last few weeks um, for all your comments that you've left on this channel or on Instagram or Ravelry or emails or little messages. Um, they've meant the world to me and they've given me such uh, a lot of strength as we've gone through these difficult months, more so than I could ever have imagined. Um, and. I say this all the time that I rubbish at putting things into words, but I just wanted to say a massive thank you. And we'll leave it there before we do get emotional. But um, the title of this episode I've decided is going to be D dodgy. The definition of which is um, basically of very low quality. Because uh, that refers to the six months we are leaving behind us, which have been, for me, uh, of very low quality and also refers to one of the main subjects of today which is dodgy bags which we will get to shortly and um, we are going to talk about today oh I normally write this down when I haven't so I'm just going to have to flick through my notes we're going to talk about the dodgy bag make along and the three giveaways that I had running but I'm going to do that towards the end and um, I will announce the winners for all of those and I'm going to talk about finished objects works in progress and some incoming stuff and probably more besides because I can't seem to stop rambling can I so uh, let's uh, get some knitting or crochet projects together and a cup of tea 
and hunker down for what was probably going to be another long episode. I think I'm just going to podcast today and maybe next week or the week after because I've got so much to share that if I did it in one episode, it'd be about four hours long. So I think now that we get, I've got a bit of time back in my life, I think I can now start to podcast again more regularly so I can split it up a bit. So I've, uh, anyway, I'll get to that in a minute. Um, one thing I just wanted to mention is I've done something to my neck in the last hour. So I woke up and I was fine. And then I took my daughter to school and on the way back from school, my neck started hurting here and it is so painful. And if I turn my head, it really, really pinches and hurts. So I've taken some paracetamol and some ibuprofen. So I'm hoping they kick in soon and, and help a bit. But if you see me kind of wincing or kind of moving like, like a robot. That's why I've done something to my neck. I feel like I'm rambling already, but I will say as well that the timestamps for everything I talk about are underneath the video. So if you want to jump to any particular point, you can just have a look below for the, uh, the timings. And I also put all the show notes underneath the video too, so that you can you know, have a look as I'm talking. Okay, so we start with finished objects. Good. Okay, so my first finished object I don't have, but I'm going to put in a video. So I'm either going to split the screen or if I just do this, <laughs> I'm going to put it around me here. I took a video of this uh, particular finished object and it is the fox head, which I made from the book Animal Heads Trophy Heads to Crochet. And it was a book by Vanessa Muncy and I've left it upstairs on my bed so I can't show you it but um, it has various patterns for uh, different uh, animal heads it goes from as small as a mouse to as big as a, uh, um, a moose head and the fox head that I did was actually one of the smaller ones so you can only imagine how massive the um, like the, the, the ram and the moose and the stag and, and things would be um, and I made it for my sister who gave me the book uh, for my 40th birthday. I'm 41 now. So it took me over a year to make it. It was so complicated. It was a good pattern. Um, but in the book, you have to jump around a lot. So it will say, uh, if you're making the snout, refer to you know, rows one to eight for the swan and then nine to 20 for the moose. And you have to jump about a lot, which, which was fine, but you needed to, you know, engage brain for most of the time you're making it. And you can't get into a rhythm when you're making stuff like that because every section that you're doing is completely different. So the eyeball is completely different to the eyelid and the section you're doing for the neck is completely different to the chest fur and you never get into a rhythm with it. And it's a, you have to constantly be switched on which is why it took me quite a while and I don't think I would make something like that again I'm not I'm not sure I was very pleased with the result and my sister's very pleased with the result I'm going to move back now because it's hurting my neck and I've probably finished with the picture um yeah my sister was very pleased with it and it's going to live in her bunny shed um she's got some very pampered bunny rabbits and it's going to be a warning to uh, all foxes to stay away <laughs> it's going to scare the foxes off um, yes, that's my first finished object that I don't have. Oh, my neck. Um, okay, the other thing that I've got that is a finished object is a pair of socks. And I've also left my sock blockers upstairs, but that doesn't matter because these socks won't actually fit on my sock blockers because they're too small. So I'm just gonna hold them up. I've also not blocked them. Very bad podcaster. Uh, I made, um, my sister bought me some uh, yarn from Little French Meadow as a gift um, during uh, one of the terrible last few months to cheer me up. And the yarn colourway was uh, called Cheer Up Buttercup. So there was a, it was 100 grams. So I thought if I made her some shorty socks, she's only got a UK size three feet, um, then I would have enough left to make me some shorty socks too. But uh, I kind of played about a bit with sizing and I did one uh, sock and it didn't really fit her properly and I used that to kind of go back to the drawing board and get the right stitch count and things for her. And eventually I came up with the right um, uh, stitch count for her feet. Oh, God. 
sorry if I keep sort of complaining, but it really hurts and I need to hold things up. It's like a podcasting injury or something. So this is uh, the sock and oh, I love this colorway. It's really nice. It kind of comes up micro stripes. Really, really pretty. It's sparkly too. I don't know if you can see it sparkly, but it is. It's got Stellina in it. Um, and this is a Rose City Roller sock, which is the first time I've ever made this. I really liked it. Uh, they fit Jenny really well. And here's the second one. Now the second one, even though I use it slightly the same, stitch count, recipe, everything, has come out slightly smaller. Only slightly um, in uh, width rather than length. Uh, but so Jenny if you're watching you're just gonna have to select which one of your feet is the larger of the two because everyone's a bit lopsided aren't they everyone's got one foot larger than the other and you'll just have to wear them accordingly got to weave in the ends uh, actually I have weaved in the ends but I haven't cut them because I'll cut them after I've um, given them a soak and laid them flat so that's uh, Jenny's cheer up buttercup socks which I'm hoping I'm getting in the screen and then with the so I knit these. Um, is there anything else I need to say about them? No, I knit the magic loop, but I knit them one at a time, and I knit most of them whilst in the hospital. This was the project I always had in my bag um, to uh, knit whilst I was sitting at my dad's bedside or in the hospital canteen or anything, um, any situation like that. So, um, yeah, it kind of reminds me of that time, but also that you know, the, it doesn't make me feel sad is what I'm trying to say because it was a gift that my sister gave me and we were all in it together and I was making these for her whilst we were both going through the same thing so it makes me feel not sad. Words today are not going to come easily are they? Um, oh why am I, in so I was going to show you what I'm making with the leftover yarn but I, that would be going all out of order, that would be a work in progress so you'll just have to wait. Otherwise, the podcasting gods will be angered and I might get struck down by lightning. There's a chance that the um, ibuprofen and the paracetamol might be affecting me. <laughs> feel a bit wobbly now. Um, okay, so that's my uh, second finished object. Oh, my next finished object. I just love this so much and it's so hot today and humid. I'm going to put it on anyway. I made, and I haven't got the pattern with me because I'm so disorganised, um, the Ragdoll's Favourite Shawl, which is a pattern by uh, Hannah, who I've already mentioned. Hannah of the Pottery Mug Talent um, is also a, she writes patterns. And Lorraine, who is the real Made in England on Instagram, um, gifted me this pattern. And I bought yarn actually specifically with the pattern in mind. And I, the, the yarn that I used, oh, I can see the tag for the yarn over there. And I feel if I reach for it, it's gonna really hurt. So I'm just gonna tell you. It was um, the Knitting Goddess uh, Brit Sock Color Wheel in the colorway Stones. And you get 12 mini colours um, in one set and I think it, it it adds up to about 120 grams. So I actually had more than I needed but I wanted to use every single colour in this shawl and this shawl is designed for using small amounts of yarn and it worked perfectly. Now I've had this, it's all blocked but I've had it rolled up so it might look a bit creased when I hold it up. When I hold it up. Um, Let's see if I can do it's too long to get in the screen. Ah, I can't stretch my arms out, but here we go. And I can't see if you can see this or not. But so this is the uh, bind, uh, there's an I cord bind off which I've never done before, and I loved that. Oh my goodness, I could have done the I cord bind off all day. Love that. And there's a little eyelet bit on the end. And it goes all the way up through the browns and the soft grey, sort of warm greys to the colder greys. And this, you start here and you, you build out and it goes all the way like that. So it's a crescent shawl, but it's a very long and um, shallow crescent shawl. Here we go. 
arm movement, arm movement, ow, ow, ow. and it's on. Look, I haven't weaved in that end. Let's just hide that and pretend that I have. Oh my goodness. This is quite a rustic yarn. There's a lot of um, uh, BFL and um, w Winsleydale. That's a cheese. Is it a sheep too? I'm sure it said Winsleydale. Well, I mean, anyway, there's a, there's, a, there's a few different breeds of sheep um, wool in, in the Britsock base that she has. So it does feel quite itchy scratchy. And it, even though I blocked it, it still smells quite sheepy. But I don't know, I, I can feel the itchy scratchy, but it's, it should be something that bothers me. I understand that. I can, I can understand why it does bother people, but it just doesn't bother me that much. I quite like it because it makes me feel like I'm wearing wool. Um, I don't know. I, I just quite like it. And actually, I find the more you wear something like this, the more it does soften. And in the winter, I wouldn't wear it, you know, in autumn or spring or something. In, I think in the winter when you've got other layers on, like your coat and you pop it on, you know, you've got things that kind of mean it's not always sitting against your neck. So, oh, either way, though. I just love it and it would also be I suppose it'd be quite good as a just oh god sorry it really hurt it'd be a nice just shoulder thing as well which and then it's not on your skin at all really it's just over all the way a little shoulder thing when you're sitting oh I just love this I think this might possibly what be one of my most favorite things that I've ever knit I've only been knitting for a couple of years um and I do yeah I, I, I do like everything but um i don't know i just love the colors i love the way it sits I, when i blocked it i blocked it using pegs because that's what hannah says to do in the pattern and i hung it out on the line and put pegs all the line uh, all along the bottom see if i can put a picture up here of when i blocked it and um yeah that worked really well and it and afterwards it just looked oh I just re i'm just so happy with it so happy with it and I can't wait for colder I mean I can never wait for colder weather because I am a cold weather person uh, but I especially can't wait for cold weather so that I can wrap up in my shawl there's a bit of the detail oh look at that every time you change colour you do this little textured bit I think I'm going to make this again you know with um because I've got um two scrappy projects on the go um which I'll be talking about. Uh, one of which is my uh, corner to corner moss stitch crochet blanket and another one that um, I'll come to. But I think this would make another brilliant um, sort of leftovers project and it just produces such a lovely um, shawl. I'd love to make that again. Okay, so that is The Ragdoll's Favourite by Hannah. Um, from Hannah from Sheep Sally. My next finished object was not even on my radar the last time I did a podcast, but I was sent um, some beautiful, <laughs> goodness, everything I need is kind of an arm's reach over there and I can't bring myself to do it. So I've got some things within reach here, which is fine, but I'm not gonna go for the stuff on the desk over there because I think I'm just gonna hurt myself. So we're just going to leave it over there and you'll just see the yarn in a minute as it is knit up instead of showing you the leftovers. I was sent some beautiful hand dyed yarn by Donna who is uh, the host of the Inner Pickle Knitting uh, podcast. Donna is fantastic. She's another one that is just so creative in so many different areas. Sewing, knitting, keeping butterflies. Amazing. Uh, and she talks about uh, children's literature as well. She sent me a beautiful project bag, which I don't have with me, but if you look at last episode, you will see it. It was her hydrangea project bag, and with it, she sent me some hydrangea yarn. And in my last episode, I did get quite emotional about it because hydrangeas uh, really remind me of my childhood, uh, growing up with my parents in um, uh, our childhood home. And, uh, I saw this pattern on Instagram 
and I just sort of went running off to, to Ravelry immediately just thinking I think this is going to be perfect for the yarn that Donna sent me and it is a paid for pattern it's by Lena Knits um, who is Pauli I'm going to say this wrong it's Paulina Caru sorry Paulina if I've said that wrong but she's Lena Lena Knits and uh, it's a paid for pattern that uses one um, a hank of yarn and it is called, just checking there's nothing else to say, it's called the Arbor Shawl. Sorry for the black and white printout. And it looks like this with the lace. I love knitting lace. So that's what I made with my hydrangea yarn. And I cast this on during the royal wedding. I decided to have a royal wedding cast on. And this is the outcome. I knit this in a week. I get so addicted to knitting lace that I just can't stop. It's the same thing that happened with the um, the Mary Margaret tan that I made. Look at the lace. And it's a, it's a little shawlette, so it's not massive. And it's perfect for, oh, it's so difficult to do this podcasting when you can't move your neck. It's perfect for just over your shoulders like this. And I love to have um, little shawls like this. I wear them often in bed if I'm reading or if we're watching the television in the other room um, and it's a bit chilly. I like to have something just over my shoulders. And if I'm gonna have something over my shoulders, it might as well be something handmade and beautiful. Um, so you work short rows to get, you start on the long edge up here and then you work short rows to get the sort of um, stockinette body and then you move on to the lace and I had to use wrap, wrap and turns um, which I've never uh, really done before so I, I actually knit the whole um, stockinette section from the top to here and messed it up and had to rip it back and I still knit it in a week and I actually emailed Lena because I got stuck and she got back to me, it was Saturday, and she got back to me within about three hours and, and helped me straight away. And I was so impressed with that, because if you think, I hear people talking about this, about the, the price of a pattern, and this wasn't an expensive pattern at all. Uh, but when you have a good designer like that who writes the pattern, and then if you have a problem, they respond to you. I mean, you're getting 10 times your money's worth from that. Um, yeah, I was just so impressed with how helpful she was and I am so happy with my hydrangea arbor shawl. Oh, I just love the lace on this. Love it! And the yarn and the pattern together. They are just a match made in heaven. I am so happy. So that's two things that I've made where I've finished it and just gone, oh, just so happy. Just really happy. Um, oh, another note on this, actually. Another note. I could not get gauge on this. So I had gone up. Was well, didn't go up or down. I knit these on 3.75 millimeter needles but the the, um, the pattern said to use 3.5 so I'd swatched with 3.5 couldn't get gauge swatched with 3.75 couldn't really get gauge but then I decided that because my gauge was coming up as I can't, I can't remember if it was coming up too big or too small, but I worked out that I'd still have enough yarn, okay? So then I had to decide, so I know gauge is important and everybody always bangs on about how, you know, gauge is important and it is important, of course, but it depends how important it is to you, doesn't it? So if I was knitting a jumper, gauge is important because I want that jumper to fit and it's a big time commitment. If I'm knitting a shawl, to me, if I've got enough yarn and I know that it's going to wrap around me in the way I want it to wrap around me, it's going to be big enough or small enough, gauge isn't that important to me. If I like the fabric that it's creating with the needles I'm using and I'm not going to run out of yarn 
and it's not going to end up the size of a dish towel when it's supposed to be the size of a duvet, um, then to me, I could kind of let it go. If I was a couple of stitches out on the gauge, I was like, well, you know, it's not a jumper. And also, life's too short. I want to start knitting it. And if I hadn't, if I'd kept messing about with gauge, to be honest, I wouldn't have got around to knitting it when I wanted to, and I wanted to knit it. So I kind of got as near as damn it, and as near as I could. And uh, yeah, so yeah, gauge is important, but it's also unimportant. I have not got the power of the English language on my side today. Let's move on and stop trying to talk about meaningful things. Um, my next finished object is not knitting or crochet. It is embroidery. And I was sucked into this by the uh, very uh, persuasive Chrissy from Chrissy Crafts. She's got the Chrissy Crafts uh, podcast. She's one of the editors, producers, producers of the new crochet zine magazine, which is really good. It's a Instagram magazine. So every month they produce a magazine and the grid, the grid on their feed is the magazine and you click on each picture on the, the grid to go into a different article or pattern. I haven't read the, the latest one yet. But the first one was amazing. It was I just I remember thinking, how's that going to work then? And then when I went on to their Instagram feed, Crochet Zine, it kind of becomes apparent. You look at it and you can see it as a kind of whole publication, and then you can go into each one. It's an absolutely brilliant idea. Anyway, she's one of the editors or producers of that, and she a few months ago ran a stitch along and took, took you through on her YouTube channel how to do various embroidery stitches and it was called the Good Intention Stitch Along and you chose a, a phrase or word or, or something that you could stitch onto your design and then you decorated it. So this is my finished stitchery. Is that in focus? I do hope it's in focus. So it says adventure awaits and then it is decorated with all of these little flowers and fauna. And look at the little knots, look at the little friendly. Now I could have just kept, I, I, I wish I had actually got a bit more mad with those French knots because I just love them. They remind me of like a hazy pollen filled day. Um, and I really like the colors. So this has been up on my shelf in the kitchen and I quite like how it's looking there. Oh, and the back, you, you sort of gather it in. This was the hardest bit actually. You gather all the bump from the fabric in and then you glue like some fabric on the back and I just use some felt. But gluing it on, that was a bit of a pain. I couldn't get the blooming stuff to stick. In the end, I, um, I did it section by section. I put a little bit of glue and then I pegged it with clothes pegs and let it dry and then moved on and it took just a few hours to do it. Um, and I'm pretty sure I've probably not done it quite correctly. But I'm very, very pleased with the, um, with the outcome. So that's my, um, my good intentions hoop all finished. And my last remaining finished things, just keep an eye on the time, is um, I've been making dodgy bags. So obviously we've had the dodgy bag um, make along, so I had to make some dodgy bags for that as well. And I didn't think I would actually manage to do it given everything that was going on, but I managed to make four because I had some pre-cut out and then, I, then inspiration struck me on one of the other ones. Okay, so I've made, actually no I haven't, I've made made four or five, no I made five dodgy bags. Okay, so I'm going to show you now. So I've made two that are very similar. So there's this one and there's, whoop, and there's this one. Can you see what I did? <laughs> so this fabric here is actually my mum's old um, Christmas tablecloth. And then this fabric here is 100% uh, organic cotton and that is actually a co cotton flower and it says organic cotton in the flower. Do you know what? I think that I have done, no, 
No, don't worry. I thought it was inside out, but it's not. Just having a moment. I'm having an ibuprofen moment. Okay, so this one is lined with some um, gingham fabric that I had left over from when I made a Dorothy dress for my eldest daughter. And so is this one. So they're kind of, they're sister bags, but not twins. And they're both drawstring. And this one's got a little just decorative taggy bit there. And this one hasn't because in the spirit of dodginess, I found it about two hours after I'd finished selling it and realised I'd forgotten. So, two dodgy bags. Um, and these are going to be gifts. I would keep them all because every time I make a bag, no matter how dodgy, I think, oh, I really like that. Might keep that. But if I kept all the dodgy bags, I just... I'd have nowhere to keep the yarn and I've got nowhere to keep the yarn as it is. So these two are gifts. They're all, well, they're not all gifts. We'll get to that. <laughs> this next one, uh, I love this fabric and you can't get this anymore. I bought this fabric in Hobbycraft years and years and years and years ago and then never used it. And I've used it in a few dodgy bags now. And it's like this, um, it's like a Japanese garden with cherry blossoms and little bridges. So I've just done that with some pink, a pink base, little decorative tab, and the lining was just some Ikea fabric I had, which is probably a bit, a bit clashy um, for lining. But I, I, I'm trying to use up the fabric that I've got, so I'm not buying new fabric. I did buy a little bit of just plain grey for some lining fabric, so I was running out of things to line the bags with. Uh, but on the whole, I'm just using what I've got. Um, so that's why sometimes um, I'm struggling a bit now that things are getting lower to, to, to find fabrics that go together. But I don't know, I quite like it. I like the fact that they're all, you know, the fabric's going to get used properly. So that's another little drawstring bag. These are all little sock size bags. Um, they're, they're, these ones I really, it's my favourite size really, because you can just shove, you can get a shawl in there um, if you stuff it. But mainly they're just a really nice little sock size um, drawstring bag. And that one's going to be a gift as well. This one I'm going to keep because in, in terms of dodgy, this is all manner of dodgy. I found, I was clearing out, I've got a box that I keep all my sewing stuff in. And in there was a magazine from something like 20, I don't know, 2008 or something. And there was a pattern in there for doing some kind of weird sort of um, quilting thing and they're doing it what's it called it's called um, block quilting it's they're doing it with knitting at the moment where you knit a square and then you knit a square on the side and then you knit a square on top of those two and then you go round and round and round like in a blocky spiral but I can't remember what it's called but the pattern in the quilting or sewing magazine, I'd obviously, past me, had decided to give that a go. And I had this panel of a mishmash of fabrics, none of which looked nice together, that I'd done. And it just seemed really um, wasteful to just throw that panel away. So I thought, well, I'll make it into a dodgy bag. And then at least, even if I just use it for laundry when I'm on holiday, <laughs> at least it's doing something useful. So. Ready? Here is the mishmash panel turned into a bag. So it's all kinds of different fabrics that don't really go together. And that in the middle, I don't know if you can see that's a little um, bird and an apple. Um, this fabric at the top and the drawstring bit and this bit are all from an antique shop or vintage shop in France from years ago. This is organic cotton. That is Ikea. That is another hobby craft, Japanese-y one. I don't know what the spotty one is. Uh, the plain blue is another organic cotton. The buttons I sewed on are also from that same little vintage shop in France. The back is completely mismatched IKEA fabric and it is lined with um, another 100% organic cotton. And I put a little... Um, handle on it well a big handle actually so it is not pretty well I don't think it's pretty but it is functional it does work and probably actually 
I even did a tiny little bit of kind of, um, I don't know if you can see, top stitching. Can you see that? Tiny bit of top stitching on some of it. Uh, and it's probably the best sewing I've ever done. Like in terms of construction and the way the bag sits together and how I've matched things like the seams, it's probably one of the best bags I've ever made. It just doesn't look it. <laughs> So this is my extreme dodgy bag. This is like taking it to a whole new level. Extreme dodginess. And I'm going to keep that one because I think I would be embarrassed to give it away. And it's actually quite big and I don't often make very big project bags. Uh, the fifth uh, bag is going to be uh, part of the prize for the uh, dodgy bag make along. So I'll come back to it in a minute. Okay, so that's finished objects and I'm probably already way over time. So works in progress. Let's move on to the one that I nearly talked about in finished objects. And that is the pair of socks that I'm making for myself using the same yarn that I made my sister's socks from. So what I'm doing is I, on a whim, decided that I'm going to make afterthought everything socks. I haven't looked at any pattern for how to do this. My intention at the moment is just to knit a tube until I run out of yarn and worry about how to do the afterthought bits afterwards, which I guess makes them, you know, genuinely afterthought. So this is where I am. I decided to do a little few rows at the top of contrasting colour at the top of the rib, and that is one of the uh, um, minis I got from the Little French Meadow Mini Skiing Club. And uh, this is the Little French Meadow Cheer Up Buttercup colourway and I'm the reason the yarn looks wibbly is I'm undoing the first pro, the first prototype sock that I did so I'm unravelling that to go into this and then I've got um, about oh I can't I think I weighed it I can't remember and then I've got this left as well so I'm just going to knit until I run out of um, all of the main coloured yarn and then do um, heels and toes after that and that is living in my little pouch that was originally a gift from my friend Erica years and years ago as a wash bag but I now use it as my handbag sock knitting bag and it says knitters gonna knit and this comes with me everywhere because it's really nice little handbag size you can just fit some vanilla socks in there and I'm using um, nine inch short circular needles for that because I can just go round and round and round and round and round and not have to worry about it. Okay, my next work in progress is something I haven't worked on in a couple of uh, weeks but have been loving and I'm doing, ooh, I'm a bit tangled so bear with me. The pattern is by Ellie of Craft Out Mac. Craft House Magic, that's the Craft House Magic podcast. It's a paid for pattern and it's her buttercup socks. Um, and the little uh, lacy pattern at the top represents the footprints of her bunny rabbit who's called Buttercup. And the yarn I'm using for these is beautiful and it works so well with this pattern. So one of the socks is uh, kind of I'm midway through the heel. So I've got them on um, Magic Loop to do the heel. But the other one I'm past the heel and I'm now back to knitting in the round for the foot. So the yarn is, have I got the label? Yes. It's Little French Meadow, of course, again, that's their little symbol. And it is, the colourway is called Hawthorn Blossom. And I bought these at Festival in November, which is a yarn festival in Hitchin in Hertfordshire. And I bought the, um, the uh, Hawthorne Blossom yarn, which is actually a sparkly yarn as well. And then I spotted a mini, and I can't remember if I was talking to um, Alison and Yola, the, the, the two ladies behind Little French Meadow, and I was talking to one of them. And I really liked it, and she said, oh, it goes, it goes with that skein of yarn that you've got. It's the same green. Um, so obviously I had to buy that too and that's what I'm using as the contrast and I can't remember who I stole the idea of just the little I think it was Sandra from Cherry Heart she always does just a little 
uh, contrast cuff at the top. I really like that. And then look at the heel. Look how pretty that heel is. This is in the in the pattern, in the Buttercup Socks pattern. So pretty. These are going to be beautiful socks. Now I don't know if you can see the, oh you can, the little lace, the little lace bunny footprints. <laughs> Yes, I'm really, really pleased with those. That is a paid for pattern on Ravelry and it's lovely. And Ellie is lovely too and she's got a really, really lovely podcast. She's another one that's really uber creative. Like these are all multi craftual people I'm talking about today. Very talented human beings. And this is living in a dodgy bag that I couldn't give away. I made this and I just loved it too much. The bottom's made out of an old cushion I found in a charity shop and the yarn I think I picked up on eBay years ago and it's got the same, the zip is actually from the cushion as well, I just cut it out and used it. Um, yeah, I couldn't, couldn't part with that one. I like it too much. Okay. Oh, my neck. It does feel like the painkillers are kicking in a bit. I've got a bit more movement now, so that's good. My last work in progress, well it's not my last work in progress, we all know it's not my last work in progress. So I'll save them all for next time, but I just want to very quickly show you um, my corner to corner moss stitch, which oh, which has which has grown a bit since last time, which is now looking like this. So this is a stitch pattern, but I can't even get it in now. A stitch pattern by Polly Plum is the corner to corner moss stitch uh, pattern, and I'm using it to make a blanket, and I'm using it with all my minis. And um, I am loving how it's coming up. It looks brilliant. Love it, love it, love it. Um, yeah, so I'm just adding minis to that. And I spent a bit of time working on that in the car last week when we were driving up and down. Um, I've got a little pouch in here with all the minis I've kind of been putting to one side. And it's living in my uh, Hannah bag that we, Hannah sent me from Hannah from Sheets Alley when we did a swap last year. Oh, and I should say as well that I'm, what you do with this corner to corner um, thing is you, you, you make it corner to corner until it's wide enough um, at one edge where you're happy with the width of it. And then you start to, to reduce it. Um, and it, she gives you the instructions to make a square or a rectangle. So I think I'm going to make a kind of rectangular blanket, uh, but it hasn't reached the, the width that I want it to just yet. So that's my other work in progress that, that I'm going to talk about today. Okay, so shall we move on to incoming? Right, now last time I ran out of time, so I couldn't talk about all of the incoming stuff that I had and had to save it for this time, which means some of the other incoming stuff that I've got for this time, I'll have to save for next time. Terrible. It's because I'm a spoiled brat and I've got too many incoming things, but it's very exciting. And someone I follow on, you see, sometimes I get a bit embarrassed. If I've been sent stuff and I feel so grateful, but so undeserving, <laughs> um, and I feel almost embarrassed sort of going, oh, look what I've got, you know, um, but someone on Instagram that I follow, and I followed for some time, said that presents should always be shared with the in the spirit in which they were given. So if they were given to you in the spirit of gift giving and celebration, then you must share them with the same enthusiasm. So that's what I'm going to do. So left over from last time, I had some yarn that I wanted to talk about. I'm just grabbing them all. So what I didn't get a chance to talk about last time was that Lily from um, Nordic Stitches podcast, uh, she sent me some lovely, lovely bits for my birthday. Um, she sent me some um, two big things of acrylic white yarn that I needed for a crochet uh, blanket that I'm doing. Uh, I talked about a few episodes ago is my multiplication square blanket that I've actually done a tutorial for, get me, and it's on uh, my very, very um, new and equally neglected blog, which is Little Drops of Wonderful um, Blogspot, blog, 
which I'll put a link to below. So I've done a, a tutorial for how to do the squares. So she sent me some acrylic white for that and she also sent me some uh, Regia Stadion colour which she said she thought I would enjoy for, uh, well, it's Hufflepuff colours. Now I'm not a Hufflepuff, I am a Gryffindor, but my husband is a Hufflepuff and my youngest daughter Phoebe is also a Hufflepuff. So I made my husband some Hufflepuff socks and now I can make Phoebe some Hufflepuff socks and probably something else as well, maybe like um, some arm warmers or mitts or something. So she sent me that, she knew that I would um, have plenty of use for it in a household with Hufflepuffs. And she also sent me two skeins or two hanks, sorry, two hanks of yarn. Um, but she didn't, I didn't, I don't think she remembered where they were from because there was no labels on them. So the first one, she obviously knows me well, is this beautiful yellowy orangey one, which I'm hoping is coming up as warmly as it does in real life. <gasps> Be so nice. And the second one is this kind of really fresh, zingy apple green. Really, really like this. Okay, so beautiful yarn. Thank you so much, Lily, but I need your opinion. I have this yarn um, from Biff Sugar. It's called Wildflower Meadow, and it was a, um, I shared this last time. It was a gift from uh, the, Alison, who is Biff Sugar Yarns. Uh, my husband ordered me some birthday yarn, and she popped in some extra for me because she's so lovely. Thank you so much, Alison, again. And um, she sent me uh, Wildflower Meadow, which I mean, come on. It's just lovely. But can I get your opinion? Because I'm thinking that these two yarns go quite well together, but you might think differently. Let's do that the other way. I thought they went rather well. What do you think? I'm just going to wrap them up together. What do you think? Let's get my face out of it. Get it together. Get it together, Alison. Just talk amongst yourselves whilst I'm flapping about. Pretending I know what I'm doing. I'm just creating a big blob. <laughs> what do you think? Do they go? I think they really go. Or are the tones too different? What do we think? Do the yarns go? Would they look nice together in say a shawl or something? I have no idea if I'm managing to convey what I'm trying to convey. But yeah, I think that they go quite nicely together. I just thought they looked beautiful together. So thank you very much, Lily, and to Alison as well. And I also got, I ordered for myself, uh, one of um, uh, Kelly Lay, who is Lay Family Yarn. I ordered one of her monthly mini things, and I think they're called Tea is it tea party or, or something it's like a monthly mini club and I just treated myself to one um, but they, there's no um, tags um, so I, I'm pretty sure it's tea party um, monthly tea party and these are the ones that I got I think they were the April ones not very let me drop that in my teeth how beautiful I mean Kelly is just a yarn dying Ninja. Beautiful. So I've been keeping those to one side so that I could show you, but now I'm going to pop them straight in here because they're going to go into my corner to corner moss stitch blanket. My little treat to myself on my birthday. It wasn't the only treat to myself on my birthday, but it was one. Okay. Um, I also... Oh, I've left something else in the other bit, but I'll show you the other bits and then I'm going to go and get something else which is epic. Faye, who is Faye from the Crochet Circle podcast, had contacted me for my address. She said she wanted to send me something. I had assumed 
but she was going, I don't know, like a card or something. She knew I was going through a rough time. And she did send me a card, she sent me a beautiful card. Which looks like that. And she also sent me little gift tags, which I shall be using. So she sent me those, which are absolutely beautiful, and a lovely card. But she also sent me, prepare to be amazed, one of her Harris Tweed and Waxed Cotton bags. This is the small size one, but she also does medium and large, and she also does them in different colours. And that's Harris Tweed. And this is a, um, it's like the stuff they make, uh, barber jackets out of so they're like ultra you know weather and waterproof they're like um cotton that's got wax in it you can kind of feel it and it that makes it completely waterproof so it's kind of like rugged outdoor crafting bag you can just put it in and you can just trudge through a field and just pop it down on the ground and it won't get water in it or you know and it's, oh, it's just brilliant i've been using it in the garden and it's got these really nice sturdy poppers it's not lined i think she just wanted to keep it clean and simple so beautiful this is it's just perfect the color oh i couldn't believe it i just kept sort of saying to my husband can you believe she sent that to me can you believe she sent that to me so thank you so much Bay. that was such a um lovely lovely love and it was beautifully wrapped in all brown paper with little tied things and yeah and uh, she uh, yeah that was very generous thank you Faye okay I'm gonna go and get the epic uh, gift that my friend gave me one moment yep right so I've got this friend who um, I went to school with I went to primary school with and I went to secondary school with. We've known each other since I shared my Kit Kat with her in Mrs. Williams' class in the second to last year of primary school. She is not a creative person. She doesn't understand at all my obsession. Not at all. But that didn't stop her on my birthday getting a massive box, going online and ordering me a ton of yarn. So she knows nothing, nothing about crafting, nothing about knitting, crochet, yarn or anything. So she said what she did was she went on to an online, she said, and don't worry, because it was it was a crochet one, so it's crochet yarn. That's how you know, it was so sweet. She said it's you know, don't worry, it's crochet yarn. And I didn't have the heart to sort of say, well, it's yarn. <laughs> and it's all acrylic or cotton okay and it's all paint box yarns oh. right i have got some paint box simply dk in this color and this color and this color this color uh, this color and then i've got paint box simply aaron in this color and this colour, and this colour. That's all the Aran weight ones. She also gave me two balls of um, white in the Aran. And I've got paint box cotton DK in these colours, and this colour, and this colour, and this colour, and this colour. Look at these colours together. They're really nice. They're all cotton DK, and they look to me like they're 50 gram balls. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. And she just literally went on and chose the ones that she liked the look of. So for the Aran, as well as the white, I've got all purples. So that works out at, what, 100, 2, 3, 4, 500 grams of the Aran. And then for the DK, she's gone for all kind of the greens. <laughs> The greens plus the one I just dropped like that oh that was hard work let's put this down in a massive box how 
adorable is that? But she actually, knowing nothing about it, she thought, I'm going to buy my friend some yarn. And that's what she did. So I got two skeins of yarn that are both lobster themed. And one was a gift from lovely Lou. And she also sent me some tea. Well, actually, it was with the yarn because it came to me from the yarn dyer. And I got some cookies and cream tea. Sounds interesting, doesn't it? And it is from Bird Street UK. Who are Bird Street UK on uh, Instagram? Are they on Etsy as? Yeah, Bird Street UK on Etsy as well. And the yarn that they sell is um, Mr. B yarn, which I, I think it's dyed by the, the lady that owns Bird Street UK. I think it's her husband that does the yarn dyeing. From from what I know of them from Instagram. And the yarn that she sent me is called, but he's her lobster. This is a friend's reference. And this is it. So that's the, the thing. He's her lobster. And this is the yarn. Ah, it's lobster themed yarn. And she sent me that as a birthday gift because she's so generous and spoils me rotten. Oh. I love this yarn so much. Thank you so much, Lou. I just love it. Love it, love it, love it. It is Superwash Merino Nylon. So I might make myself some lobster socks, you know. I think lobster socks can only be a good thing. My second lobster themed piece, of, um, piece, hank of yarn, is from lovely, lovely Becky, who is uh, back to blighty. Is she back to, I'm sure she's just back to Blighty on Instagram and her Etsy shop is back to Blighty, although it might be back to Blighty yarns, but I'm pretty sure it's just back to Blighty. And she dyes yarn and she's an amazing um, sewer. Is that a word? Seamstress? Person who sews? Um, she's she's amazing and she dyes yarn and she, uh, she, oh, she, she's got a lovely podcast as well and you will adore her if you go and watch her. She is Back to Blighty. And this is a superwash merino, 20% bamboo, 15% silk. Uh, and it's called, she sells this in her shop as well, Lobster Lagoon. Just love this. And look at the little stitch marker. Ooh. The little seashell stitch marker. And that is her label there. So kind of um, 1940s wartime reference back to Blighty, isn't it? Oh, so these are my two lobster. They're both so different, but both so lobstery. Just brilliant. This is quite a luxurious one with the silk and everything. So I think this might have to be a something around my neck or face. Thank you so much, Becky, and thank you so much, Lou. Um, as usual, I am very grateful, very undeserving, and very spoiled. And my last final incoming thing leads me on to the make-along and giveaway news. So if you have entered the make-along for the dodgy bag make-along that I uh, hosted with Crochet Luna, I'm going to draw the winner for that too, from the FO. Oh, right, so I'm drawing a winner from the FO thread, which I hosted on my group, and Claudia is going to draw a winner from the chatter thread, which she hosted on her group. And um, her prize is amazing. She's got one of her beautiful bags that she makes and some yarn and some of her crochet luna pins as well. So absolutely brilliant. So if you've chatted away in the chatter thread, um, I think she, she's only just recently released her latest podcast. So I would imagine she'll draw a winner on the next one. But she sent me, because we agreed to do a, so we agreed to do a swap at the beginning of the year, a dodgy bag swap. And I've got, um, I've got bits put together for Claudia, but um, I obviously had to delay slightly because I didn't really have time uh, to put together a proper parcel uh, with the attention that it deserved. But uh, Claudia still wanted to send me um, her side of the swap, even though I haven't sent mine yet. But it, it will be on its way soon, Claudia, and I'm really hoping you'll be as excited as I am about some of the bits in there. Um, but she sent me my dodgy bag, which of course is the opposite of dodgy. Um, it's got this beautiful little handle. It's this beautiful floral fabric, lovely drawstring, perfect 
nice big size. And then on the inside, look, she's got a little Crochet Luna label. Can't see if that's coming out, Crochet Luna label. Okay, but she also sent me other stuff. So with the bag, as well as a lovely card and some tea. Well, I just remembered as well, Becky, back to Blighty Becky, when she sent me the lobster yarn, she sent me a lobster card. And I love it so much that it's actually taken up permanent res residence in the living room. I don't think I'm going to take it down. I might have to just frame it or something. But uh, Claudia sent me this beautiful llama card. Love llamas. Uh, and some stickers and some lovely tea. And so exciting! Two of her pins. Claudia designs a lot of pins so this is her crochet luna one and this is her crochet friends are the best of friends and that is so true pin so they're gonna go in my little pin collection i want to make myself a bag for my pins and i haven't done that yet i'm just keeping them all in one place for now also inside she sent me a load of her dodgy bag buttons now claudia's actually uh, going to be giving some of these away as well and um, she's selling them in her Etsy shop now she's based in the UK uh, she's based in the US um, and she's selling them there and she's donating some of the proceeds from the sale of those to um, Parkinson's UK in memory of my dad who suffered with Parkinson's for the last 10 years of his life um, and she contacted me to offer to do that and I was really really touched by that so thank you so much Claudia for for offering to donate some of your hard-earned money um to, to um such an important charity um thank you but she sent me a whole bunch of buttons as well so this is her uh, member dodgy bag club established 2018 and it's a little pin badge I can never get these to focus I think because they're shiny can you see it so cool so whoever wins um in the draw for the uh, main prize uh will get uh one or two of these as well and i'm going to be sending them to a few other uh people as gifts and then i'm going to keep some of the future future giveaways as well uh so she sent me those and she also sent me some this yarn oh my goodness right so this is um yarn hand dyed by um twin mummy creation i we say twin mummy but it's twin mom mommy <laughs> how you spell it in america how i don't know why i'm saying you how people in america spell mummy m-o-m-m-y and in the uk we spell it m-u twin mummy creations what am i talking about and the colourway is picking wildflowers it's a superwash merino nylon and sparkle and it looks like this. Oh my word, it's amazing. <gasps> ah, so, so happy with this. Yellow is my favorite color, in case you didn't know. Now, I was very excited about this because I love the color. It's beautiful. It's yarn that we would, I could never get in the UK. Um, it's so me as well. The colors, I just, I just love this yarn. I almost don't want to use it, I just want to look at it. But I've had a little project in the back of my mind for some time and I just couldn't decide on my colours. And that is the Blur Shawl Crochet Project by um, Adaday Designs. And I think that this could be the key to my Blur Shawl because I went into my stash and I had two other yarns that I'd put together thinking, hmm, I think they quite go together, but there's nothing... Mm, not sure so I'm going to show you now and you see what you think the first one was a gift from my lovely friend um, Carrie who is my wool mitten on Instagram and it's um, a woolen homestead yarn which I talked about in another podcast and it was a gift in a swap we did in January um, it's called Hogsmeade Holiday you can see I've written in there because I, I, I like to remember where all my yarns come from and this is the yarn Hogsmeade Holiday which now that I've been listening to the Harry Potter books, I understand. 
And the other colourway I've got is um, called, it's either on a fidget base and it's called Tiffin, or it's on a Tiffin base and it's called Fidget. I don't know. Either way, it's an Easy Knits um, colourway. Make of it what you will. Is it called Fidget or Tiffin? I don't know. I'm going to say it's called Tiffin. And it looks like this. This is a um, singles, merino singles. I don't really know what that means. <laughs> I, think it's, I think it means it's not plied. Okay. What do we think? Do we think this would make a good blur shawl? I do, but what do you think? You're helping me make decisions in this episode. God, it still smells so nice. <laughs> yeah, so I think that this could be my blur. You know, just looking at those colours together, I think I don't really care what anyone else thinks. I think these are going to be my blur shawl. <laughs> Okay, so we draw some winners. My prize for the dodgy bag make along is this bag that I talked about earlier, which has a lovely Japanese fabric and space for your pins. And I've also popped in some fabric that lovely Alison of Biff Sugar donated as a prize to the podcast. And I need to give this away as soon as possible before I try and steal it. Um, Biff Sugar Yarn, she's on Etsy as Biff Sugar Yarn. She's also got a lovely podcast. It's the Biff Sugar podcast. You need to search Biff Sugar, all one word. This is an 80% uh, Superwash Merino, 10% Cashmere and 10% Nylon. And the colourway is Luck Dragon, which is a, uh, a never-ending story uh, uh, reference. The Luck Dragon just love this colorway so you're going to get that and you're going to get the bag trying to hold it up and be professional and you're going to get i'll probably just shove a couple of extra bits in and of course you will get the um dodgy bag pin shall we put that in now so that we don't forget we'll put two in then you can give one to a friend okay so we had 182 entries and it brought me and you know this the, the mail went on over a very very difficult period of time in my life and it brought me such a lot of um happiness to see all these bags popping up on instagram and in the fo thread and and to you know hear people say that they were getting back into sewing or they've given it a try and and they're embracing like the fact that yeah sometimes it's wonky first time you try something or you know it's not quite right but it works it's a bag and the zip goes up and down or the the drawstrings work and you can actually use it and it was just uh, a joy to see it all unfolding so thank you to everybody who joined in and chatted and had a laugh with us and posted in the fo thread and i think we're going to be doing the same next year oh we cool dear <laughs> um so I've also got an extra prize to give away because lovely Amelia, who is um, on Instagram and is a viewer of this podcast, contacted me to say that she would like to donate a pattern up to the value of $7 um, for one of the winners. So I'm going to draw an extra winner for that. So Amelia, that's super, super generous of you. Thank you so much. And once I've drawn a winner for that, I'll get in touch with... Um, Amelia on your behalf and if you could give me your Ravelry name I'll sort it out but let's go now and do it so for the main prize of the bag and the yarn and the pin I'm going to put in a, a minimum number of two and because obviously we don't want my first post and a maximum number of 183 and then we are going to generate a random number and it's come up with uh, oh, 151. Can you see? 151. So now we're going to go to the forum and we're going to have a look at who 151 is. I realised I could do this before the podcast um, and that would save time and make things easier. But I always think it's quite fun 
to do it sort of live and do it together because then we both get to find out who it is. Okay, so post 151 is, oh, it would be a difficult one to say, wouldn't it? Kobaninga. And let's go and have a look at who you are before I show everyone your bag. Okay, so you are Koba and you live in the Netherlands. And you have made this gorgeous uh, bag with spotty fabric. There we go. So that is Koba's bag. If you could get in touch with me on Ravelry and just give me your full name and your address, I will get that posted out to you. I'll contact you as well after a couple of days if I haven't heard from you. Okay, so well done Koba. And the next one I'm gonna draw is for a pattern price from Amelia of a value up to $7. Generate again. Right, let's come up with 91. The, the number 91 who has won a pattern from Amelia is Morgan D93. And that is Morgan and she lives in Texas um, in the United States and her bag is beautiful. So Morgan made this beautiful bag and she has won a pattern from Amelia. So well done Morgan, well done Coba. So I think that's it for everything I uh, wanted to cover. I feel like I've just sped through it uh, whilst at the same time talking far too much. One more thing I wanted to share with you. I bought these um, when I saw them on Tracy, who is What Mustard Made on Instagram. I saw these on her feed and I was like, I've got to have those. Let's get them to sit up. These, I think, I think they're called blobs of happiness or something, or happiness blobs. They're little, she does them as key rings and stitch markers. And you don't get to, you can't really choose, cause she'll send you them random, but I did message her and say, look, it's gotta be yellow. And one of them's gotta be the luminous yellow one. Look what she said. They're just so adorable. Look at their little blobs of happiness. I'm gonna have to get more of these because they are just, I mean, what? what love them and then that's the little extra she popped in little heart but yeah blobs of happiness so those are my little happy blobs for stitch markers yeah so i think that's everything i wanted to cover today um thank you very much for joining me i have no idea if this episode is going to be shocking or not but i will be back either next week or the week after with loads more to share with you um and hopefully being a little bit more together and being able to move my neck would be nice too so i will see you next time for episode 31 bye the glorious mess of podcasting. Honestly, I think I might have to have a cup of tea before I clean this lot up. <laughs>